Is it the end of the road, ladies and gentlemen? Is it the end of the road? I feel, I feel really sad. I really do. I mean, with everything that has happened this season, this is probably the icing on the cake. Do you know what I mean? Like it just finishes everything off. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. I'm hoping this news does not come to fruition, but I think it's more just hope, really. I mean, in reality or my gut feeling, my intuition, everything that I've been saying in regards to, you know, Roman getting sanctioned, then possibly he have, him having to sell Chelsea Football Club, so and so forth, everything's sort of been coming uh, to fruition. And you can see where it's all going. And this whole Antonio Rudiger situation, ladies and gentlemen, late last night, UK time, there was a tweet from Di Marzio, and he generally doesn't tweet out rubbish. Like, he's, he's, he's a well-known source. You guys all would, would know this. Um, and even Nathan G. Singh uh, was also talking about this and the fact that Antonio Rudiger is probably leaving, ladies and gentlemen. And there was a chance that he could have stayed, wanted to stay, but now we're running out of time. And I... I'm so upset. This is probably one of the biggest blunders the Chelsea Football Club's done under this, you know, Roman era. To even think about, to even contemplate the idea that Rudiger could be gone for a free, it's mad. Thomas Tuchel picked this particular player up under Frank Lampard when the stocks were absolutely rock bottom. He was booed by the fans, told to leave the club. The club didn't treat him well. Journalists out there blaming him for Frank Lampard's sacking. And then Thomas Tuchel picked him up and we've not looked back. He's become one of the best defenders in world football. And his stocks are so high now. And this is when we are let him, well, he's going away for free. Yes, we have actually, we have, we have let him go because now, of course, we've got the sanctions. But what were we doing at the end of last season? What were we doing at the end of last season? What were we doing? What were we doing, you know, earlier this season? What were we doing in January? I'm not going to sit here and think that. We never had the time. We did. We did. We had the time. What was he asking for? 180, 200,000? Even if you were looking to fix the wage structure, is it necessary to fix it with Rudiger? You could have said, you know what? You're a top player. You're a top defender. The gaffer wants you. The gaffer thinks you're... You're a cornerstone of this whole situation. You're going to be the outliner. You, you're going to earn more. But from here on, whoever comes in or whatever deals we do, we'll, we'll assess what we do. But you're not going to be someone that becomes a precedent. You're, you're an outliner. But you won't become a precedent. For example, Kunde can't come in and say, oh, I want to earn what Rudy earns. No. We have to have some authority. You, you look at what, what's happening in Liverpool. Mohamed Salah is probably asking for a lot of money and Liverpool's not going to give him what he wants, but they're giving him something extremely well. These are some of the reports that's gone around. Like they're giving him something really good, which is beyond what all the other players earn. But that doesn't mean all the other players are going to start going, knock, knock, you're giving Mo Salah that kind of money. I want it. Well, are you Mo Salah? 
this is the kind of authority that we need to have at our football club when doing the wages. Hmm? Yeah, Chalaba can't just knock on the door and start saying that I want to start earning what, what Rudiger earns. Chalaba can't do that. Do you know what I mean? Like Lee Wakowa, for example, can't come in and start asking, I want what Rudiger wants. Kunde, for example, can't. We need to have that authority to say no. When you when you do that level of work, when you have achieved what he's achieved, and when he's done that well, then you can demand for that kind of stuff. Now, this is what we think. I think Christiansen fell into the same trap where he wanted a lot more money, but you know, we we, we simply didn't see him in that in that particular perspective as as Rudiger. I mean. Maybe it is a good idea with the new owners coming in and having a fresh start. <clears throat> a lot of people are saying new owners will come in and they'll they want to keep Marina, they want to keep Bruce Buck. I, I, I say, you know what? Maybe no. I say maybe this is the right time to get rid of all of them and start fresh because we've made some blunders. And it's not just Rudiger. Some of the wages that we're paying to Timo Werner, Romelu Lukaku, even Ben Chilwell, there's not some astronomical wages. Even someone like Callum Antonadoy, who hasn't played for God knows how long now, hasn't done well. He earns a lot more than Rudiger. How does that, how does that make sense? We've screwed up. We've screwed up and, and we need to probably just start afresh. It hurts. It hurts. I, I, I want to share something with you guys before we look into some of the news of, of this whole Rudiger situation. I probably wasn't the biggest fan of Antonio Rudiger in the earlier stages. Um, he definitely did well under Sari, and then obviously got injured. That big injury then came under Frank Lampard and didn't look didn't look the same. Didn't look the same after the injury. Big knee injury didn't look the same. And maybe we were a bit too early to judge him. And I did fall into the trap of thinking, oh, this guy's just a poor defender. Do you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, he's not. He's not a poor defender. And I think Frank Lampard's style of defending, the structure that he had, it made us believe all, some of these defenders were poor, Christensen, Rudiger, so on and so forth. But we then saw what was, you know, what, what we were capable of with, with Thomas Tuchel. I have to be honest. I was probably one of those ones as well that was criticizing Rudiger under Frank Lampard. But I think it all changed for me when, when Frank Lampard got sacked and a lot of the blame was coming towards Rudiger. And I felt really sad that a player should not be treated like that. He, the amount of abuse he got from his own fan base in social media and in the stadium was mad, was very, very mad. And then luckily, he stayed around because there was talks. Frank Lampard wanted him gone. He wanted him sold. I think West Ham was in the market for him and many other people. Luckily, he stuck, you know, stuck around and now here we are. But it's sad. It's sad that we didn't finish this off. You know, we, didn't, we weren't able to give him that contract extension. We had enough time. Antonio Rudiger is very close to joining Real Madrid. De Marzio. Manchester United made the richest proposal for Rudiger, but his representatives are now closing in on a deal to Real Madrid. Fabrizio Romano and Antonio Rudiger's move to Real Madrid on Instagram. Work in progress. Um, Real Madrid seems like they I mean, can you imagine? Eda Militao. Rudiger on a free for Real Madrid. Wow. If they can add Kylian Mbappe, which they are, Schumann to add as well, they're gonna become they're gonna become a top team again. And they'll be so hard to beat in Europe. They really will be. This was Zach Lowe. We had to say, ladies and gentlemen, Chelsea have given Callum Antonador 120k per week. Christian Pulisic 150k. That's another name. Kepa 150k. Oh my God. And Romelu Lukaku 325k per week. This guy. But we. But when it comes to time to pay Rudiger, they turn into father from everybody hates Chris. I honestly don't get it. It is quite embarrassing. It is quite embarrassing, to be honest. Um, fair, but why wait until February? At any rate, they're paying the price for taking forever with the ownership saga. Um, it's quite mad. Looks like Rudiger is off to Madrid then. Thanks, Marina, for not paying him what he wants. Thanks, Rain, for taking 10 years to sell the club. 
my mood right now is crap. It's it's mad. It's mad. Not gonna lie, I can't really blame the sell process for taking long. It's a multi-billion pound deal with so many layers on it. Makes no sense that it takes less time uh, than Conde to Chelsea. Blame Marina for sure. Exactly. At the end of the day, we can't, I'm not blaming this whole sale situation. I'm blaming the fact that we had all this time initially and we didn't take opportunity of it. Tuchel built Rudiger into the defender he is today when he was at his lowest market value. Now we got to hope Tuchel can do uh, deal with someone else on the market. Um, I think Rudiger is a man of his words. I believe he will wait at least until he hears from the new owners. His agents are free to run around, but he has the final say, and I believe him and his personality. Look, I'm hoping. I'm hoping he sticks around. It all depends how quickly we get this over the board, the new ownership situation. I'm not sure. And this is why I want this done and dusted, because a player like Rudiger literally has about a month and a bit to go. Um, and then after that, there is no home, and he has to find a new home. And what's the guarantee as soon as the new owners come in? What if they backtrack? They're not, we're looking for a new direction. It's, it's all mad. He's got to do what he has to do for his family. I can't blame him. I can't believe Rudiger is getting close to Real Madrid. Shake my head. Arguably our best and consistent defender since Tuchel arrived. I won't forgive me, Marina for that. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, let me know how you feel about Marina. She's made some blunders. She really has. I know she's done some good jobs as well. But Bakayoko, Drinkwater, Zappacosta, the list goes on. I mean, Baba Rahman. Antonio Rudiger is one step away from moving to Real Madrid. This is from Madrid Extra. I read Drinkwater, Bakayoko, and Sara on more money than Rudiger. It's mad. More inconsistencies in player salaries than Chelsea's home form this season. Uh, I think someone put a picture of this. Yeah, look at this. There's a list of all the players. Look at Saul, 198K. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look at this. Rudy got 100,000. He's so well below the list. <clears throat> it's not even funny. Um, Lukaku's earning 325K, Kante 290K, Werner 272K, and Odoi 120K, whilst having only four career goals in the league. And Rudy got one of the best defenders in the world. Can't get 200K from this club. I feel sick. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time to slowly wrap things up with Antonio Rudiger. Say your goodbyes. It's making me sick. It makes me feel so angry. It makes me upset that we even got it to this level. It's one of the biggest blunders in during during Marina's time, during Roman's time at Chelsea Football Club, that a player of his caliber is leaving for free. It's mad. What do we do? We've got Levi Kowa. He definitely steps in, but he's not going to be someone we just rely on straight away. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's going to make mistakes. He's a young player. We need to get into the market. Jules Kunde, hopefully... That's going to be done and dusted, but we probably need someone else on top of that. Um, and God knows what what's going to happen. We don't even have owners. We don't even have owners. So I can't even think about rumors or anything like that. We're not linked with anyone at the moment because there's no owners. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what your thoughts are. Rudiger to Real Madrid, probably a huge possibility. Do you think he's going to stick around? Do you think we're going to get this ownership situation sorted soon? It's mad. It's mad.